in to another new AMP podcast. I'm your host, Ben DuBose, news editor with the AMP publications team. Today, I'm excited to welcome in Raul Reback of GE Global Research, Sana Virtanen with Friedrich Alexander University, and Dr. John Scully of the University of Virginia. Here at AMP, we're continuing to seek out innovative ways to engage with our members and highlight the outstanding work that's being done in our field. With that in mind, we're putting the spotlight in this episode on our awards program here at AMP, and more specifically, delving into the remarkable achievements that led to SANA being honored with the prestigious Willis Whitney Technical Achievement Award in 2024. Each year, the Whitney Award recognizes an individual for outstanding contributions and merits that have received international recognition and impacting the global dissemination, advancement, and understanding of materials protection and performance-related phenomena and processes. Sana, your work has already set a benchmark in our industry, and it should be very beneficial for our audience to hear directly from you about your journey and your insights. Dr. Scully and Raul, my hope is that your roles as task force chair and program committee chair can help provide our audience with a deeper understanding of the criteria, the selection process, and the overall impact of these awards. But before we get into the particulars, I want to start by allowing each of you to briefly introduce yourselves to our audience. Just give us a brief overview, if you could, of what it is you're doing today at your aforementioned employer, as well as anything else of significance that you'd like to mention here off the top. Raul, let's start with you. Hello, uh, my name is Raul Rebac. I work at G General Electric Research Group in Schenectady, New York. And I do a lot of uh, mostly project uh, management and also research in the laboratory that shows in my code that I'm working today, which is a holiday in my company. But uh, uh, so that's what I do. And I, uh, of course, participate in many uh, technical societies, uh, not only AMPP, but many other technical societies. And inside of AMPP, I am the chair of the uh, awards committee which is the one that administers about 15 different awards. And one of those is the Whitney Award, which is the most prestigious award in science for the AMPP. And uh, I'm very, uh, uh, our committee has um, what is called a task force groups, which administer each one of the individual uh, awards inside of the committee. And um, Professor Scully is the, a task Force Chair of the prestigious, as I said, Whitney Award. So I will let to John to speak next. Hi, folks. I'm, uh, I'm John Scully, and I'm the Charles Henderson Chaired Professor of Materials Science and Engineering at University of Virginia, and I'm the co-director for the Center for Electrochemical Science and Engineering. Uh, I do research and education, and so I teach my corrosion class uh, typically to undergraduates and graduate students, and the graduate students uh, come up this fall, starting this week, but I also do research on a variety of topics in corrosion, and uh, most of those can be seen somewhere in a corrosion journal or on Google Scholar, but um, I believe in diversity, so I try to work in a couple of different corrosion areas. And uh, last but not least, as I as mentioned, I'm technical editor of corrosion journals, so I'm the technical editor-in-chief, and i um, I uh, do other service activities. One is the head of the task force on the W.R. Whitney Award of AMP, which is a very prestigious award, probably the top flagship society award. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you. We'll wrap up with our awards winner. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, hello everybody. So my name is Sanna Virtanen. I'm professor for corrosion science uh, at the University of Erlangen, Nuremberg which is located in uh, Bavaria, in Germany, <clears throat> and uh, in the department, material science and engineering department. So uh, I also do research, of course, in the, uh, in, in the field of corrosion science and engineering, and also uh, teaching. So uh, having a research group of uh, enthusiastic PhD students and, and postdocs, and uh, it is, uh, I've been doing corrosion research my whole life, actually, like, since my uh, undergraduate uh, education in Finland and then uh, lived in different countries, continuing doing uh, research and education in the field of corrosion. And it still is quite exciting for me. So I am AMPP, I know uh, mostly uh, already from previous times uh, and uh, like from all the 
conferences I've attended to. Let's transition our discussion to the awards specifically. And obviously in this episode, we're talking primarily about the Whitney. But beyond that, I know there's an entire class of winners that's going to be honored in early March at the 2024 AMP Annual Conference and Expo in New Orleans. Carl, if you could just tell us a little bit about the award system and what the objectives are for you all at a committee level. So uh, yes, at the committee level, what as I said, we administer several awards. We are open so for suggestion also for new awards for people can create or or uh, uh, recognize other people that are not recognized right now. But the the, the important thing is to let uh, maybe the younger generations that uh, that we are recognizing their contribution to the science of materials protection and performance for the benefit of society at all. So that's the reason we have these several levels we have in science, and we have a recognition also for, for example, early career, for educators, and for even people in the field or on the floor that do maybe coatings or application of paints and things like that to structures. So uh, for aesthetics, for, for benefit against corrosion and things like that. So we are, we are several areas of, of that, and, and we invite everybody from AMPP to participate in this awards committee and maybe to contribute their knowledge or their things that maybe the committee members at this moment are not seeing. So we are ready to listen to everybody. Among those awards, the Whitney is clearly the flagship. So can you all elaborate on that as far as what the award stands for? And I'll toss this to Dr. Scully because I also want to ask what stood out with regards to SANA's candidacy this year. Sure, Ben. Thank you for asking. Um, so the Whitney Award, as I mentioned, is a flagship award in the society that goes way back to 1947 and it's been awarded every year since then. Um, and first award, of course, going to W.R. Whitney. And he took the corrosion field was a, was largely based on some really good but empirical knowledge. And um, he, he, he sought to provide a scientific foundation that would guide you uh, when you came up with a new unexpected or, 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 or new service environment or new alloy or um, a new coating that, or new mitigation strategy and corrosion, you'd have some theory on, behind it. And so the Whitney Award is given for significant, really lifetime integrated body of work over life, scientific contributions. They could be in theory, they could be in methods that everybody uses today, they could be mitigation science and protection, they could be on damage, damage prediction, and mechanisms of damage. Uh, even people are challenged, industries challenged all the time with accelerated testing. You know, what do we, how do we re, how do we reproduce lifetime? We don't have 10 years to wait to test something in the in the field. We need an accelerated test. So what's literally the science of accelerated testing? And last but not least, emerging materials or materials in unusual environments, harsh environments, you might think about. And in, in Sana's case, she embodies all of that. She's done research in all those areas. Uh, some of her notable work is in the nexus between biomedical, physiological, and materials. And so she's done some of the most seminal work in this area, particularly with magnesium, but not just, also in dental alloys. And uh, more broadly, she's done really surface layers, looked at how surface layers regulate corrosion processes and regulate other processes going on at the same time. Uh, and I would say I could say passivation, but that's probably a little bit too narrow. Her her uh, experience with surface layers uh, that people use all the time in corrosion, or they get them, uh, is is really notable. And so uh, when you put all that together, it's a, it's not just one thing. And so something that you know future award uh, nominees might consider is many many things, and it's an integrated lifetime uh, body of work, and uh, that can be seen in things. You know, not the only indicator, but things like Google Scholar, uh, where she has over 16,000 citations to her work. Um, she has over 210 papers that have been cited 10 times. Just think about that, 210 papers. You know, that's probably, uh, you know, that's five a year for her career. And those kind of uh, achievements are, are, are really what stood out to the award committee. Sana, can you tell us and our audience a little more about your career journey? How did you get from where you started all those years ago to where you are today? Yes, it has been a long journey. So, uh, so I was uh, I grew up and was educated first in Finland, my native country, 
and uh, I was studying material science and engineering at the Helsinki University of Technology. And I got into corrosion uh, corrosion science by uh, actually during my master studies, uh, ma- master master education, and my master thesis uh, I carried out in in the uh, in on a very interesting and challenging topic on related to corrosion of icebreakers. So uh, okay, so this was Finland, and it was also during winter time. I I was. Uh, at that time, I was actually, it, it wasn't because of just because of corrosion that I wanted to do corrosion, but it was uh, it was a nice opportunity, to, a very nice topic to work on. Then I moved to Switzerland, uh, where I did my PhD at the Federal, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, ETH Zurich. I then uh, got really, really excited about corrosion because it's such an interesting topic to study because corrosion phenomena are it's like at the interface of materials and environment there's interfacial electrochemistry there are dynamic changes with time you have to understand materials you have to understand microstructures of materials but then you have to have a good understanding of chemistry as well so scientifically it's quite interesting and when you continue working in the field of corrosion you realize that corrosion is so important because it's we are dealing with corrosion issues everywhere uh in in our normal uh, every everyday life, so if it's your car or your bicycle, you can have rusting going around. If if you think in terms of human health, like uh, uh, Dr. Scully already mentioned previously, I had these projects dealing with uh, 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 corrosion of biomedical implants. I had I had so I had I I have been working uh, uh, in the fields of health in a way so of course always from the side of the material science part but then uh, at this interface towards medicine and health of human beings and of course corrosion has a lot to do with sustainability sustainable future because if you 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 don't want to just let the materials we are using just to corrode away so so for me corrosion has been this journey has been interesting because even though I've been doing research in the field of corrosion for such a long time, there are always new issues coming up. And it could be new applications of metallic materials, where these materials encounter new type of challenges due to the application, but also, of course, related to uh, development of new type of materials. So new microstructures by new processing or new type of uh, uh, alloys. So there is has been a lot to do, and we will continue having these challenges, even though we understand nowadays much more about corrosion mechanisms. But uh, I think this is something where research is going to continue strongly. For me, in my my uh, career, I think what has been really, really rewarding and important, I have been very lucky to have very inspiring mentors from the beginning. And then I had this uh, opportunity to... Uh, live and work in different countries. So I was also staying some time at uh, in the USA and in Canada, and uh, always, always working together with extremely exciting and inspiring researchers in the field of corrosion. And of course, then also uh, what is fantastic when you when you work at university and you do research, you have this opportunity to go to conferences, to meet people, meet colleagues, start collaborations from, from from. Uh, from with colleagues from all from everywhere from everywhere in the world and 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 this is something wonderful which keeps you kind of like also energetic because I like to do my work on my own also but then also having all these interactions with uh, different colleagues and of course at the university but is also really really rewarding is is the opportunity to to work together with uh, young people so being able to to help the next uh, generations of researchers to start their careers. And this is just something wonderful. I know one area that's been a major success for you over your career is with regards to alloy corrosion. You've made major contributions to our understanding of that. Is there anything in particular that stands out in terms of your areas of research within alloy corrosion, not just for you, but your research team as well. Uh, is there any particular highlight or two from your career that really stands out in that capacity? I think I've, yeah, I think this is difficult to answer for me. I I, I, I think uh, 
things have just kind of like from one topic to the next, uh, they were just like developing. Sometimes it was a question also, honestly, sometimes uh, uh, many of the, a lot of the work was done because of scientific curiosity, but some of the work started also because there were funding opportunities. And then it, then it turned into really exciting scientific questions. So it's always a lot of these different things going on. I think uh, what has been really uh, interesting is like, for instance, uh, if we think uh, uh, magnesium alloys. So I started first working on magnesium alloys because uh, uh, they are lightweight structural metals or materials. And there was interest of using them, for instance, in cars because of lightweight. And there, of course, you need really, really good corrosion protection for magnesium alloys because magnesium is, of course, the most reactive, technically important metal. And then it happened that when I came to Erlangen, so I moved from Switzerland to Germany, I was contacted by uh, some researchers who were interested in using magnesium as a biodegradable metal for temporary implantation. And they, uh, and they, they knew that uh, I, had, uh, I had done some some work related to magnesium alloy corrosion. So now we still have the same type of alloys, but different environment and different. And now, now it was very exciting for me because suddenly people liked the fact that magnesium is corroding easily. So now corrosion was something they wanted to have, but they just wanted to have enough of understanding how magnesium is corroding under biological environment so that one could control the corrosion rate. And then uh, when I moved into this biodegradable magnesium, then again, being in Germany now, I then also had new projects starting going back to the classic magnesium corrosion case, so magnesium in cars. And interestingly, uh, looking at these phenomena from the different viewpoints, the environment and the application was different. Of course, the corrosion mechanisms, the basics and principles remain the same. And both of these or, or the different fields I was working in with the same type of alloys, they were also profiting from the fact that I had projects from both sides of the magnesium field, so to say. But I don't know, There, may, uh, I think there were many highlights uh, in my view that were exciting for me, but I cannot really say like what would have been like the most important or anything like this. As far as the future, I know there's no crystal ball, but are there any general areas or points of emphasis when it comes to what's on the horizon and future areas of research for you and your team? First of all, my future and my team hopefully will continue working still some years, but uh, not so long that, I mean, uh, I've been working now quite an extended number of years and, and at some point uh, it will I will be going towards retirement. You know, in, in Europe, we have retirement. We don't continue working forever, but I will, of course, keep uh, uh, working still some years. And certainly I will I will never stop reading, reading literature and following up what is going on the, uh, in, the field, uh, in the field of materials, performance and protection and corrosion. I think uh, one thing that is coming up very strongly now uh, has been coming up already quite uh, strongly uh, materials. Uh, new type of materials, new type of microstructures, new type of uh, chemical compositions related to uh, processing methods such as uh, additive manufacturing. It's not really new. It has been going on already quite some time, but uh, there are good opportunities to get new uh, uh, materials properties with this type of techniques, how to make materials. And then the other thing is uh, where generally probably materials is going, material science uh, there will be new developments, uh, things related to, of course, artificial intelligence and this kind of new opportunities for research in general. In addition to your day job researching corrosion, you've clearly taken on a leadership role within the industry at large. That's evidenced by your work within AMP, your marquee roles with various industry publications, and your mentorship for the next generation, which I know is something you pointed to previously in this interview as important. Can you give us a little bit of color on why that's such a clear point of emphasis for you to go the extra mile beyond simply what your day job is and really try to um, you know, leave this industry better for the next generation that's coming in behind you, as you were just describing? I think it's just important, of course, that... Uh... 
if, if you generally wherever you work but especially of course it, it comes naturally when you work at the university that that one is uh, it's one of the biggest things or the most important things of course at the university that you also care about the next generation because this is that's what we do we are we are educating next generation researchers and engineers of course but it, it gives you extra i mean if i would be working only in view of writing as many publications for myself, so to say, or maybe for my colleagues who read them, it's one thing, but it just gives you, at least to me, it has given so much more if I if I have a feeling that something that I have taught in a classroom or by discussion with my students here in my office, and they remember maybe later what I taught them and, and it can help them to solve also future challenges related to materials. Or even if they just remember some small things related to some basic corrosion issues, it just gives you a good feeling, but it's important for the world and for the society, for sure. So for me, it's natural. It's it's normal that it's important. What does the Whitney Award mean to you? And when I ask that question, I'm asking it in both a short-term and a long-term sense. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, short-term, you'll be recognized at conference. There's a Whitney lecture, I believe, on Tuesday. And so it's great to receive that recognition in front of your peers. But I'm also thinking long-term, how it could potentially help your career, any areas of future research. Just explain what the award means for you, both now and in the future. When I heard about that, I have, I was awarded, uh, I was uh, recognized with this award. I was extremely happy and, 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 and felt very honored about it. I know about the Whitney Award like from a long, long time because I remember... Of course, attending to conferences when I was still a PhD student myself and, and then see, uh, seeing these uh, Whitney presentations of uh, quite uh, famous people. And uh, of course, if I look at the list of the Whitney Award winners, it's of course uh, great to be one of these, uh, great to be one of one of the people who have, who have, uh, who have gotten this recognition. So it makes me very happy and very honored uh, and uh, of course because it's a it's an it's an award given by a uh, leading uh, society or association in the field of corrosion science and technology and it is such a prestigious award of course i feel uh, as i said very honored to uh, that i have been selected as an award winner for this of course it also is very it's certainly helpful to to have this award in your CV, so to say, if you, uh, I mean, first of all, uh, locally here, my my group has been also excited about it because, of course, it's also their award, you know, right. because you don't get an award because you are just yourself. You need your your group. I mean, it's 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 a it's a joint award for many many people who contributed to the research I've been doing, and then of course, it all in all, I mean, awards to uh, help you, I mean, whatever we do, when we write grant proposals or when we, when we, uh, I mean, just even in the department at the university level, it's, uh, of course, a good feeling when not only, I mean, yes, it's, it's that you know that there are colleagues around that you feel that you deserve such an award. It, it, it's good good for anybody's career also, certainly. Absolutely. Raul, as far as attendees at the conference, what should they be looking out for as it pertains to the 2024 awards? Obviously, the Whitney is the flagship, but there's several beyond that. How can mm-hmm. people that are in New Orleans take part in the celebration? Yeah, you know, as you said, it's not only the Whitney, but the, but the many other awards. So we are very pleased uh, that uh, from last year was the first time the AMPP gave awards in many categories. This, this in New Orleans will be the second time. And we are very pleased uh, on the looking at the awardees to see the diversity. I think this is the first time where the majority of the award winners are women, actually. And, and this is very nice to see that. Uh, we uh, we named several awards now after uh, women because before it was mostly named after you know white males and things like that. So there is a huge diversity. We have uh, award winners not only from the United States but 
from Europe, from Asia, and many other countries. So uh, everybody can participate now and be be happy that they belong to this community of of, of corrosion and and coatings and material protection and performance. So we are extremely pleased with this uh, new society and the 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 range of 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 award winners that we have. As I said, it's not only professors. Uh, at the university explaining corrosion mechanisms, but uh, also people that contribute to the industry at large. Donna, I want to allow you to have the last word as we wind down our podcast. For any listeners that may want to reach out to you, maybe they want to congratulate you or to just learn more about your career, what are the ways that they can do that? So first of all, of course, I want to thank AMPP and I want to thank the award committee and uh, everybody who worked on my nom- nomination, really, really many, many thanks uh, for this wonderful, wonderful thing you gave me. If anybody's interested in uh, learning a little bit more about certain things related to what was discussed here, what was said to me, everybody's welcome to talk to me when I come to the meeting in New Orleans. Uh, maybe not everybody. I mean, I, I would be glad to talk to everybody, but there will be a couple of thousand <laughs> of uh, <laughs> attendees. But uh, I'm open to any discussion. And of course, people can also reach out to me by email and, and, and we can chat about things. So thank you for everybody. Thank you for taking the time to join us. And again, congratulations. Farul and Dr. Scully, anything that you all want to add before we close up shop? No, I just want to add congratulations to Sana. And I do want to give a little advertisement. So the talk will be on Tuesday. And we look forward to that uh, to be announced the room number in the exact time. Uh, I also want to tell you that uh, there will be reception in Sana's honor mm-hmm. on Tuesday yeah. night, and that's the Ohio State University of Virginia joint recession, re- reception that um, occurs on Tuesday night. And so stay tuned for that, and we'll get a chance to have a toast with Sana. Awesome. Thank Bro, you. anything you'd like to throw out? No, no, thank you very much. I just second the advertisement from John. That has been a, a huge tradition that we had for many years about meeting on Tuesday night. So, and we, of course, we'll celebrate the achievement of Sana at that time. Thank you. Absolutely. Sounds great. Can't wait to hopefully take part. <laughs> All right. That will do it for this episode. I want to thank our distinguished panelists, of course, the Whitney Award winner for 2024, Sana Virtinen, also Raul Reback and Dr. John Scully. Again, thanks to all of those guys for their contributions to our industry and for taking the time today. As far as me and us here at AMP, I'm Ben Dubose, news editor for the AMP Publications team. If you want more resources from us, the easiest way to get them is at ampp.org, amp.org, also ace.amp.org, ace.amp.org. That's the website for the conference. And there's also an app. We don't have a printed program this year. Everything is going to be through the app. So if you have not downloaded that app already in advance of your trip to New Orleans, please do. That annual conference app is where you can get the latest up-to-date schedule on everything going on on the ground in New Orleans. Obviously, the Whitney Award lecture, awards night, the things we've been describing today, as well as a full conference schedule of symposia, forums, exhibit hall for three days, I believe. So much activity on the ground in New Orleans. We hope to see you. And for the latest schedule, the easiest way to do that is by downloading the AMP annual conference app for your phone. All right. With those plugs complete, we will adjourn here for Sana, Dr. John Scully, and Raul Reback. We will wrap it. Thanks, as always, for listening. And please come back soon for another new AMP podcast.